Okay, so we want to talk about inverse functions, and we use the word inverse a lot. Um, the inverse of multiplication is division. The inverse of adding is subtracting, right? Those are inverse operations. An inverse relation is just um, reversing the set of ordered pairs. So if I give you this relation, which is not necessarily a function, right? The inverse is just switching the coordinates, right? So it's like... Um, every x y becomes y x so if i was going to reverse these if i was going to find the inverse it's just switching the ordered pair so that's the ordered pair 2 1 the ordered pair 3 6 the ordered pair 0 6 and the ordered pair 0 1 right but we don't want to just talk about inverse relations. We want to talk about inverse functions, right? So a function, first of all, here's some new notation for you. That's not f to the negative 1 power. That is read as f inverse. Right? So if we say, suppose f and f inverse are inverse functions, by definition, that means that the domain and range switch. So if f of a equals b, then the inverse of b equals a. So we're going to say domain and range switch. All right, so I can show you this with a function here. So let's say f of x is x plus 2. The inverse of that is x minus 2. Um, so if I plugged 5 in here for f, that would be 5 plus 2, or I could say f of 5 equals 7. Now in the inverse function, now I'm going to plug in the output there. I'm going to switch the domain and range. So if I plug 7 into that function, look what I get. I get 7 minus 2, so I get that f inverse of 7 equals 5. Right? If they are inverses, that will work for every point. Okay? But you can't do that for every point, so we're going to do some other things to show that two functions are inverses. Okay? Um, so one thing we want to be able to do is find the inverse of a function. And we're really going to do exactly what the definition says, which means we're going to switch x and y. So I wrote some steps here if you're a step person. Remember that f of x means the same as y. So my first step is to find the inverse. You're going to replace f of x with y. So in this problem, if I replace f of x with y, I would get y equals negative 1 half x plus 1. That's step one. Step two, we're going to do the definition of the inverse, which means switch the x and the y. So the y becomes the x, and the x becomes the y. And then you're going to solve back for y, right? We like to solve for y, so I'm going to just do some lovely algebra here. I'm going to subtract 1. So I'm going to get x minus 1 equals negative 1 half y. And I want to get rid of that negative 1 half. And you might say, let's divide by negative 1 half. But I don't want a gross fraction. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, right, which is just negative 2 over 1, or just negative 2, because um, that's going to cancel these out. I'm going to come up here. So I'm going to say y equals negative 2 times x is negative 2x. And negative 2 times negative 1 is plus 1. That's step 3. And then step 4, I want to write it as inverse. So instead of y, I'm going to replace that with f inverse. And yes, you probably can find a way to skip some steps here and still get the right answer. Um, but you've got to be able to find the inverse of a function. Um, so we want to look at the graph of this or of inverses. So let's do another one here. So if f of x equals negative 3x plus 3, we're going to graph the function in its inverse. So I'm going to do this one in blue, since it's a blue function. Right, that's just y equals mx plus, 3, mx plus b, right? So that's a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of negative 3 over 1. So that's down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1. So if I found the inverse of this, I'm going to do that in red. So I'm going to say y equals negative 3x plus 3. And then definition of inverse, I'm going to switch x and y. 
So I'm going to say x equals negative 3y plus 3. And then I'm going to just solve for y. So I'm going to subtract 3. And I'm going to divide by negative 3. And I'm going to divide it like this. Um, because I want to think about slope, right? So that would be negative 1 third x plus 1. And I'm going to write that as the inverse. So I know it's the inverse of negative 1 third x plus 1. And then I'm going to graph that. So that's going to have a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of negative 1 third. So if I go down 1... That would be over 3, or up 1 would be back 3. And what should have happened here is we should get that these points switched places, right? So think about this point right here. This was the point um, 0, 3. Look at this point right here. This is the point 3, 0. Right? Definition of inverses is that the, all the points have switched places. Um, another thing that that shows us is that this is reflected about this line right here. Right? This is the line y. Whoa, that's still dotted. This is the line y equals x. And if you take those two graphs and flip them over that line, um, you should get... Um, that they match up. So you don't really have to know that. It's just something that's uh, kind of cool as you do this. Okay, and you'll do some of this tomorrow. One more thing. To prove that two functions are inverses, all right, we need to do some algebra, and that's where that function composition comes into play. So to prove that these two functions are inverses, two functions are inverses if and only if their compositions gives you the identity function and the identity function is just x so it says if we do f of g of x right remember that's just f of g of x and we do that and we just get x back and if we do g of f of x and we just get x back if that is true then we can prove that they're inverses so it says determine if 3 fourths x minus 6 and 4 thirds x plus 8 are inverses. So I'm going to do it algebraically, all right? So if I do f of g of x, whoa, that's too many parentheses. Remember, I start with the, the inside function. So g of x is 4 thirds x plus 8. And now I have to put that into the f function. So up here at the f function, everywhere that there's an x, I'm going to replace that. Oh, I did that backwards. So I have 3 fourths x, and x is 4 thirds x plus 8 minus 6. Again, all I did was replace the x with this. And if I do that, 3 fourths times 4 thirds is just x. And 3 fourths times 8 um, would be 24 over 4, which is 6. And then minus 6 is the identity function. So we can say that f of g of x is x. But it's not proven until you do the other way too. So I also have to do um, with g on the outside. So I have to do g of f of x. And f of x is 3 fourths x minus 6. And then um, we're going to plug that into the g function everywhere there's an x, right? So I'm going to say 4 thirds times 3 fourths x minus 6 plus 8. And again, all I did was replace x with f of x. And again, I get x. And then 4 times 6 is 24 divided by 3 is minus 6. Sorry, just kidding. 24 divided by 3 is minus 8 plus 8 which does give me back x, right? Oh, I can't get this to move. Move. So I get that g of f of x equals x. So if you really wanted to be like proovy here, right? G geometry proof here, we could say since f of g of x equals g of f of x, which equals x, then 
f of x and g of x are inverses. What I'd like to know is if you think there's another way that you can prove two functions are inverses um, algebraically. So think about that. I think that's it. Yeah.